Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong, driving wind. 
and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is from Psalm 104. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. 
To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you.
On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To the Lord's Gospel. We are received. A number of years ago, uh, in the height of uh, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the army, maybe the military in general, but the army was spending a lot of money, for good reason, on what we call strong bombs. They were retreats for families, uh, couples pre-deployment, families during deployment, families after deployment. We even had some set up for single soldiers. And there were a number of curricula that we could use. Uh, one that I became very comfortable with and really enjoyed using was called the five love languages. I won't go into details of what they each are, but basically it was teaching people how to understand how they receive love and to understand how their, their spouse receives love so that they could make sure that they're trying to love that person as they receive it. Because most of us have a tendency to love as we receive. And to get to become comfortable with the ways others receive love and intentionally try to do that for them. So related to that, this theme of language. We have in that first reading this first sense of the fancy theological term is glossolalia. The speaking in tongues. I was talking before Mass a little bit that it's curious in that reading, it's hard to discern, at least in the English language, and my Greek is terrible, but were they speaking in tongues or were the people that were hearing the language hearing in tongues? It doesn't really matter for this case. But the Word of God was proclaimed and understood to a variety of people in a way that they could receive it. And Jesus Christ says in the Gospel, I send you as apostles, well, disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have a responsibility to take what we have and out into the world and preach that Gospel. Now if we take what I started with, that idea of love languages, let's apply that then to how we understand God or one of the ways we understand God. God is love. How are we proclaiming the love of God in ways that people can understand? I have a fault with this. I like the study and to dig deep into the history of the faith and, and the depths of the faith. And I'll, I'll just go on rambling about that. But perhaps the person I'm talking to really doesn't care about fine points of doctrine or law that fascinate me and let me continue on. I'm going to lose that person. I'm going to not communicate well the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to him or to her. So that it is on me, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, to proclaim the gospel in a way that that person can hear it. That takes time, takes practice, takes courage. Part of it is getting to know the people that we are proclaiming the gospel to. I would love it if we could all go out there and just stand on the street corner and make thousands of converts like they did through the grace of the Holy Spirit in the early church. And maybe that's still happening around the world. God has not graced me with that gift. But what if we learn about the people around us every day where we are in the world, where God has placed us, 
in my family, in my workplace, in my classroom. And the people that I talk to, as I get to know them and I get to understand how they receive information, how they receive love, how they receive God. And I make that effort to proclaim the word of God in a language that they can understand. That means I might have to grow. I might have to change. I might have to learn a new method. I don't have to abandon who I am and how I go about things, but to expand it. Because the Holy Spirit has given each one of us a gift for the upbuilding of the body of Christ, his church. Does that mean I get to ignore all the other parts of maybe those gifts that I don't have? No. It means that one is particularly good for me and good for the church, more importantly. But perhaps if I take that concept of love languages, God's languages, and learn how I receive the word of God and how to share that with others, we will come to a greater expanse of the kingdom of God, proclaiming the gospel, making converts for the body of Christ, and bringing more and more people into that full communion, the one true Catholic apostolic church. Brothers and sisters, let us take that time. Be like the apostles in that first reading. And go out and proclaim that word and make it so the people that hear us understand it. And maybe that's with patience, with kindness, with understanding, and committing to perhaps a long-term conversation, a long-term relationship. To be that person that helps someone understand who is so broken and so hurt, perhaps. That we proclaim the word of God to them in a way that they slowly begin to heal and trust again. And not for my sake, not for your sake, but for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ and the salvation of a soul. Let us proclaim the word of God in the language of God, the language of love for the people around us, that they would come to know and hear Jesus Christ speaking to them in a way that they hear it, understand it, and receive it, and their hearts are converted to it. Amen.
since God endows us with the gifts of his own life, by imparting the Holy Spirit, let us come to him with prayers inspired by the Holy Spirit. Let us come to him alive and free in the divine presence. For all who have been assigned and sealed with the Holy Spirit, that this church may be united as one body made of many parts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peoples of the world who do not know God, that the Spirit of truth proclaimed to every nation may indeed renew the face of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the outpouring of the Spirit of peace, that men and women may know the forgiveness of their sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community gathered by God, that the Spirit who makes holy our Eucharistic gifts may strengthen and refresh us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the departed, that they may be made perfect in the life-giving Spirit, especially those who have died in the service of our nation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father all-powerful, receive these prayers from a people made one by the Holy Spirit who always dwells within us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mysteries of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your past and mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit 
as the church came to birth, open to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with passive joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory.
He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Hallowed be thy name, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, hallelujah.